Hello, I'm here with Commandant John Leddingham, former international show jumper for Ireland and now a top class coach. John, how are you today? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Now obviously you enjoyed tremendous success abroad as a top international show jumper. Most notably you won the Hickstead Derby in 1994 and 1995. But is it always show jumping that has been your equestrian discipline of choice? Yes, in, in that I joined the army in 1977 in Ireland, uh, the equitation school, and all young officers um, to, to make their, their, their riding abilities better. They do um, dressage, um, combine training and eventing. So really to be a top class show jumper you need to be a rounded equestrian. So we're lucky in the equitation school that we had that range open to us, that we had a number of horses and very good instructors. Obviously you've had a terrific number of accolades that you've achieved over the years as a top class show jumper. But apart from talent obviously, what would you put your success down to? Horses. horses, absolutely horses. The 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 ability I think of, of a top class show jumper is the supply of horses. Um, no matter what your talent is, the real athlete is the horse. So when 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 you're lucky enough to have talented horses, mm -hmm. then you can you can show your skills as a talented equestrian. Without having the talented horse, no matter how talented you are as a rider, or how talented the trainer is, you won't get the result. But if you have the mix where you have a talented rider, a talented horse, a talented coach, a good veterinary surgeon, then you have the possibilities of, of huge success. And what show jumping achievement has given you the greatest sense of satisfaction over the course of your career? I, I was lucky enough to have some very nice horses. And I think the first time I won the Hickstead Derby was in, in 1984 um, on a horse that was about 16 won, um, lovely little horse called Garen. He had also been on my on a first winning Aga Khan in Dublin and Dublin for for an Irish person to win on your home Nations Cup. Yes. Um, I'd been watching that since I was about seven in Dublin <laughs> when I was riding ponies there and I'm looking riding ponies, get off the pony, go and watch the international jumping, watch the Aga Khan, all the pomp ceremony and then you find at 26 years old you're walking in the gate and the crowd goes quiet and then say okay this is your chance <laughs> yes <laughs> now show what you're made of <laughs> and and that feeling that that feeling of of pressure that you've exerted on yourself but also all the training all the hours all the expectation now it's real just amounting to that minute and yeah, a half <laughs> that minute and a half and, and it's you know how many years i would say from when i was about 7 so 20 years training 20 oh, years Lord. expectation uh, try and find the horses get the training be good enough um, all the time waiting to get there and then to get there and get the opportunity that is the feeling that sticks with yes. me and do you still compete today no i retired when i was 40 which is 10 years ago okay <laughs> um, and purely um, I ran out of horse but I competed for oh, since I was about seven and to compete at the top level the demands on, on, on competition at top level the demands are huge the, the the personal sacrifice that you make I mean I, I take my hat off and I watch other sports I'm a big sports fanatic mm -hmm. so I love rugby I love athletics I love downhill skiing, yeah. uh, windsurfing, any sport, I'm a sport fanatic. Uh -huh. And I understand the commitment that these guys have to give to be the best in their sport. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what I've turned to in my coaching, that I can really say, you know, that I have the opportunity now to pass on my experience to, to young, talented riders. But it's a huge jigsaw, so just talent is not enough. It's talent, it's hard work. It's been able to take the knocks that sport throws at you. It makes you a stronger person, a better person. But you need the support of parents, sponsors, supply of horses, and the travel. It's, it's a hard, demanding life. But the rewards are great. Personal rewards are fabulous. Yeah, it's an enormous amount of pressure. Do you miss competing at all? No. Um, no, because once you compete at a high level for a long time, you have to say, okay, when am I going to stop? Yeah. And once you decide to stop, uh, my personality is such that I can say, okay, that's it, I've done that, now I'm going to move on. So I, I don't even, I don't open that box anymore. Yes. That box is closed. It's ticked. I've, yeah, and it's, it's ticked on. and I move on. Excellent. And what do you enjoy most about coaching, obviously, what you're doing a lot of at the moment? I, I enjoy having the opportunity to work with talented riders on talented horses.
and for the last five years I've been I've been involved with the Juniors Young Riders in Ireland and trained the the teams for for the show jumping. Um, I've been involved with SEA in Scotland for the last four years um, since Paul Dara passed on he was there before and I've enjoyed that mantle and the the facility an opportunity to meet young people in the sport mm -hmm. is what I really enjoy. That I would have competed with um, David Broom, Harvey Smith, Eddie Mackin, <laughs> so all those household names. And the opportunity to pass on that education, that experience, that when you ask people about, they don't know who David Broom is, they have an idea. <laughs> Yes. You know, they know, but the younger ones, and 20 years in somebody's lifetime, if they're, if they're 15, mm -hmm. 15, when you ask them about different greats in show jumping from the 70s, the Harvick Stinkins, the Hugo Simons, yeah. they have no idea. <laughs> so I'm lucky enough that I've spanned both of those yes. and still, and I love meeting the youngsters with their enthusiasm and their, their, their thirst for learning, yes. that they really want to learn. They want all the information you have, and they yeah. want it now. <laughs> uh -huh. And I'm trying to explain, you can't have it all now. It takes yes. it takes ten years mm. to get from from being a good rider into a really good rider, yes. doing all the right things along the way. Mm -hmm. I see. And what do you see most from young riders, mistake-wise, when you're out and about, perhaps judging or coaching? <coughs> what are the the pitfalls that are quite easy for young riders to fall into? I suppose. Um, not having the pressure of competition. You need to be able to perform under pressure. So the biggest mistake is going to be that we work towards, if we say we pick a European Championships as our goal, we really need to bring those young riders, those 16, 17 year olds on horses to compete against their peers in Europe. So yes. you're competing against their peers under pressure and then if you do four, five or six international shows yes. where they might be a very talented rider in a small pool at home, but now you take that small pool into the European circuit and all of a sudden they're just, nobody knows who they are mm. and they go in and um, they think they've done a good job and they're beaten by six seconds. <laughs> and all of a sudden they're out of their comfort zone uh -huh. and they've got to up their game mm -hmm. to, to be there. So that's the biggest thing that they just, you know, all the way along you tell them they're brilliant because they are brilliant, but they're brilliant at a level. But now once you, once you move up the level and you say, okay, let's move it up, let's step up the game. Let's get against the best in Europe, where they have mm. twice as much money as we have to buy horses. <laughs> yes. You know, where they have the real horsepower. But we're going to sneak in and beat them because we can ride better. Mm. And with that confidence, so it's the confidence and be able to take the knocks that come with it and still bounce back and compete again. And what advice would you give to young riders out there who are looking to make their mark? The Scott Brashes and the Douglas Duffins that you're here training today. What's, what's the biggest pearl of wisdom that you can give to them? The biggest pearl of wisdom is to trust in their own talent and never close off the learning. Always be open to, to, to learn. And if it's not working, change it. So, Compete against the best and from competing against the best and be that the best course builders. So you've got to defeat the course builder first. Before you beat any other competitor in the class, yeah. you have to beat the course builder. And a lot of people forget that. They, they, they're thinking about the jump off, thinking about that. It's one fence at a time, it's one course at a time, and then back in, you still have to beat the course builder mm -hmm. before you beat the fellow competitors. So don't go faster than you can go. <laughs> yes. You know, you've, there's, 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 there's an optimum time where you keep the horse in balance. And once the horse is in balance, you can go very quickly. It might be the shorter turn, the, the neater line, the, the, all the little fractions a second. If you take it that every stride the horse takes is 0.6 of a second, so if you've gone in and you've gone around in 39 seconds, for me to take three seconds off you, I've yes. got to leave out six strides roughly on course. Mm. So to be able to, to, to read the course and, and do that, and then have the trust of the horse in it as well. Yeah, and looking to the future now, all the Olympic equestrian disciplines such as show jumping of course, eventing and dressage, what do you see for the future of those disciplines? 
the, the sport has got so strong. I mean, the sport is stronger, stronger, stronger. The numbers of people competing, it's incredible. The, the demands on the horse, unfortunately, as a result of the sport getting so strong, the demands are, are, are bigger. Um, to be a top-class international rider now, you need two, three Grand Prix horses, maybe four, yes. because you've got your Super League Nations Cups, you've got your World Tour, you've got your World Cup Indoor, and the season never stops. You can't, you can't keep riding them constantly. You can't. Also. So you need, you need a supply of horses where you can rest one, and horses peak at different times. You've got to pick your competitions, have a solid program to work towards. And that is probably the biggest difficulty facing the, the young riders like Scott, like Douglas, um, that they don't have that calibre of horse. If you're lucky in your career, they say you get two good horses. <laughs> but with the amount of, of competition, so what do you do? Do you say, OK, I'm going to jump the Nations Cups, sacrifice the Grand Prix, I'm not going to do the Nations Cups, I'm going to jump in the World Tour. There's all those those questions that you have to answer. What are your goals? And have your goals set set in stone and work towards them. And don't don't over jump the horses that you have. If you look yes. after them, they'll last you a long time. Mm -hmm. Try and find sponsors. Um, horses of that caliber are, are very expensive to buy. The supply is low, the demand is huge, mm -hmm. yeah. so the prices are sky high. And the difficulty for, for any young person in sport is how do you make the sport work for you? How do you survive in the, in the economic situation that we have, where you have a horse that's worth um, 100,000, all of a sudden somebody says, will you take 500,000? Yes. Um, how do you say no? And, and if you don't have the horsepower, you can't compete. So it's, it's, it's the biggest difficulty they will face throughout their career. How do you make the sport work for you? and how do you make it enjoyable. Yeah, and I think that can be said of all the disciplines, really, Absolutely. across the board. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for talking to me, Commandant John Leddingham. Pleasure.